All right, kiddos, we're going to jump into Vodcast 9.1. We're going to talk uh, about the first section of gas laws today. It's going to be very algebra intensive. Um, so if your algebra skills are a little rusty, hopefully this will uh, catch you back up and you'll be okay with some algebra after this. So the first thing I want you to do is grab a piece of paper. Okay? I want you to fold it once, as uh, I would say lengthwise, but as I've learned is the right way to say hot dog style. And then I want you to fold it again hot dog style. Okay? So you should have sort of a kind of a fat ruler looking thing here. And then on that, what I want you to do is I want you to write these letters. I want you to write P, T, V. Okay? P on this side, a V right in the middle, and then a T on the far other side. Now those stand for um, our three terms that we're going to be worried about today for all of our gas laws, and those are pressure, temperature, and volume. And one thing that I want to make real sure that you uh, keep track of while we're doing this is that all of your temperatures have to be in Kelvin. Now, yesterday we learned how to turn Celsius into Kelvin. So remember that Kelvin is equal to degrees Celsius plus 273. Okay, so hopefully that sort of rings a bell for you. Um, the volume and the pressure, they can vary a little bit in this stuff today. Um, although it wouldn't hurt to sort of keep in the back of your mind that you want to get, try to get pressure in atmospheres most of the time and volume in liters, but it doesn't have to be today. But temperature always has to be in Kelvin. Okay, so let's dive in because there's a lot of math in what we're doing today and I want to have time to walk you through each of the steps of the algebra. So first law. First law is something called Boyle's Law. Okay, um, and what Boyle's law says is that the volume of a fixed mass of gas varies inversely with the pressure at constant temperature. And you're like, holy crap, that's a lot of crazy scientific jargon. You know, what does that mean? Okay, so here's what that means. If you take your little friend here that you've constructed, okay, your PTV, all right, um, if you take that and then you hold the temperature constant, okay, so take your little friend there and put your fingers over the T right there in the middle. And then you make the pressure go up. What happens to the volume? Well, if pressure goes up, volume goes down. Pressure goes down, okay, volume goes up. And the other way around, too. So if volume goes up, pressure has to go down. If volume goes down, then pressure has to go up. Okay, we're going to see that for each of the three major laws that we have today. And that's why you've made... Um, Oh, that's why you made your little friend here, your little PTV. Okay, now, mathematically, this is what the formula for Boyle's Law looks like. So, real quick, let's just sort of add to our scientific definition there. Um, just to, you know, clear it up a little bit for you that as pressure increases, okay, volume decreases volume decreases, okay, and vice versa, okay. Now, the simple way to say it um, is that as one goes up, the other one goes down, okay. So, one goes up, other one goes down. That's what your little PTV thing there is going to show you. So, mathematically or formula-wise, what that means for us um, is this, that um, we have P1 V1, P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. Now, what does that mean? That means that I've got initial pressure, initial volume, and that that's going to be equal to a second volume, or a second pressure, and a second volume. Okay? So I think the best way to sort of understand this is to work a problem. So um, if you don't have this on a sheet in front of you, then copy this problem down, and we're going to walk through this. Okay? A 15.0 uh, liter sample of gas at a constant temperature and 2.5 atmospheres has its pressure increased to 5.0 atmospheres, what is the new volume? Now, you can make a pretty good estimate anyway. Um, what you could sort of know already is that um, pressure went from 2.5 to 5.0, so pressure went up, okay? So if pressure goes up, then that means that volume goes down, okay? So I know that my final answer has to be less than 15, but let's actually work the math for that. Now, there are a couple of ways to approach this. I think that one of the easiest ways um, is that there's, there's a couple of ways. You could write everything out, which is what I tend to do. So my V1 is 15.0 liters, okay? And so I, I write everything out separately. My P1 is 2.5 
This is kind of like writing your given and your unknown in stoichiometry problems, except that we're not going to have any railroad tracks in this particular problem. Um, and my P2 is 5.0 atmospheres. Now, you don't necessarily have to write it all out like that. You could just go in the problem and write next to each one what it is, as long as it's clear to you and you can tell what each thing is. Okay? And then what I'm looking for is it says, what is the new volume? Or in other words, what is V2? So in this case, I'm looking for V2. Now, there's no railroad tracks here because I have a formula. In stoichiometry and in mole conversions and all that stuff, we don't have a formula to plug stuff into, and so that's why we use the railroad tracks. But in gas laws, we pretty much always have a formula, so we're going to plug this stuff in here. Okay? So I'm going to take each of my values here from my problem and just plug them into the equation. So I've got... 2.5 atmospheres. Oh, pen. Let's not start this business tonight. Okay, so we've got 2.5 atmospheres. Okay, what is that? That's P1, right? Okay, times my V1, which is 15.0 liters. Okay, that's V1. That's equal to five atmospheres, okay, that's P2, and then that is multiplied by V2, okay, and V2, of course, is what I'm looking for, that's what I'm trying to solve for, okay, so we got to do some algebra, and I mean, simply stated, algebra says that if I want to get one thing by itself, which I want to get V2 by itself, then I just apply my rules of algebra. And remember that your general rule in algebra is that you can do whatever you want to the equation as long as you do it to both sides. So to get V2 by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by five atmospheres. Okay? Now, what does that do for me algebraically? Okay, makes that cancel out, right? And so then I'm going to plug all this stuff into the calculator. Now, there are a couple of ways that you could do this. You could have done this math first, this red math right here, first, and then divided by 5. It really doesn't make any difference. However, you're most comfortable plugging it into the calculator. And when we plug this in, what we're going to get out in this case is we're going to get 7.5 liters equals V2. Now, again, I sort of intuitively knew that because um, my pressure doubled. And if we go back to what Boyle's Law says, it says they vary inversely. So if pressure doubles, that means volume should have, okay? Pressure went up by two, volume should go down by two, a factor of two, okay? And so therefore, I cut the volume in half, basically, and that's what the math is going to show me there. So that is my correct answer, okay? So that's Boyle's Law. Um, the next one that we're going to worry about here is Charles' Law. And Charles' Law said, states that the volume of a fixed mass of gas and constant pressure varies directly with the Kelvin temperature. Okay, now what does that mean? That means that volume and temperature increase together. Okay, and so again, if you take it, if you grab your little friend there, okay, where you've got your PTV, okay, and this really should be a little bit more spread out, but you got your little friend there. Um, if pressure is constant, then temperature and volume go up together. So T and V go up together, T and V go down together. Okay. Um, or we could look at that um, just as easily or perhaps more easily on our screen here. Probably would have made a lot more sense um, at this little deal. So if I keep my pressure constant, okay, and then I do my rotation, temperature and volume both go up together, okay? Temperature and volume go down together in that case, all right? So how does that work algebraically? Well, here's the formula. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Okay, and you're not going to have to memorize these formulas. You're going to, um, first off, you have a formula sheet, and I'm going to show you a way here at the end to make it a little bit easier. So, let's work a problem. At a constant pressure, the temperature of a sample is raised from 30 degrees to 90 degrees Celsius. If the initial volume is 5.5 liters, what is the final volume? Okay, so I'm going to write down what everything is first. I, that's, I just like to keep, I think that these problems, it helps if you just keep everything as neatly um, tied together as you can. So I'm looking for final volume, right? I have an initial volume, 5.5 liters. Okay. Um, let me move this out of the way a little bit, guys. Um, and then what else do I have? I have a T1 and a T2 given to me in the problem. T1 is 30 degrees. T2 is 90 degrees. But if you recall back at the beginning, we said that we can't 
leave everything in Celsius, it has to be in Kelvin. So I have to add 273 to, 273 to each of these temperatures um, to get our actual temperature that we want to plug into the problem. So in this case, we're going to have 303 Kelvin. Then we're going to get 363 Kelvin. Okay. Hopefully that, that's a 6. 363. Okay. So plug that into our equation. Again, what's our equation in this case? Well, we've got V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Okay. And so we want to plug everything in. So um, my initial, so 5.5 liters divided by my initial temperature, 303 Kelvin. That's equal to V2 over 363 Kelvin. Now again, a couple of ways algebraically that you could solve this. Um, I could um, easily get rid of some of that stuff to make us some room over here. Whoa. Um, I could very easily um, multiply both sides by this and then do the math. I could divide this out and then multiply both sides by 363. Really, again, whatever algebra you're comfortable with um, will work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get V2 by itself. And to do that, I'm going to multiply both sides by 363. Okay, so cancels. And then that means over here on the left-hand side, I've got 363 times 5.5 liters. Boy, that 5.5 does not want to work for me tonight all over 303 Kelvin and that is my V2 so now it's just a matter of punching that into the calculator we punch that into the calculator and we get 6.6 um, .6 liters okay um, we actually get like 6.5 whatever but sig figs now whenever I'm doing math here I always want to go to my lowest number of sig figs um, the temperatures usually sort of work out really wonky so I don't worry about those most of the time um, but the volume here is what I'm going to stick with sig figs. And so since I have two here, I'm going to keep two of my final answer. And once you get your answer, you want to take your little your little friend here, and you want to see if that answer makes any sense. Well, the temperature went up, so the volume should go up also, and it did. Um, it didn't go up by as much, it seems like, because you're thinking, well, didn't the temperature triple? Not in the Kelvin scale. Okay, we went from 303 to 363, so it's not really a tripling. Um, it's more like a percentage gain, about 20%, and that's pretty much what we get here as well. Okay, so that's Charles' law. Now, um, just real briefly to sort of go back, just, just a tad to what we were talking about before. Um, with each of the laws, what's really helpful is to go back, and the way that I like to memorize which law is which is to memorize what's constant in each. So Boyle's law has constant temperature. Um, Charles' law has constant pressure. Okay. And then we've got our third law, which is Gay-Lussac's law, and it has constant volume. So it's something different from in each of the three laws that makes them different. So what does this one say? Well, basically it says that if we keep the volume constant, okay, um, then pressure and temperature increase together. So volume stays the same. Okay, so if we brought volume to the same place, then temperature and pressure both go up at the same rate together, or they both go down at the same rate together, okay? So, Boyle's law says that pressure and volume are inversely related, that pressure goes up, volume goes down. Um, the other two laws, Charles and Gay Sachs, basically say that two things go up together or go down together, okay? Um, so let's work a problem real quick, just to make sure that we know how this one works. Same basic principles, though. Um, I'm gonna shorten things up here a little bit. Um, I'm going to label in the problem what each thing is. Um, so what do we have here? We're going to take, um, we're going to say that my initial pressure is 75 kilopascals. Now, I would kind of prefer that everything was in atmospheres, but um, when you're working a bunch of these problems, sometimes you just don't have time um, to do all those conversions. Um, we're trying to minimize that. So I'm going to just write down what they are. So P1, P2. My T1 is 25 degrees Celsius. And again, that's not going to work. I need that in Kelvin, so I add 273. That gives me 298 Kelvin. Okay. Now, our formula again, P1 to P over T1 equals P2 over T2. 
Now, when we plug this one in, the algebra gets a little messier. I mean, not terribly complicated, but it, it's going to look a little weird. So, 75, okay, um, kPa over my initial temperature, which is 298 Kelvin, and then 225 kilopascals over what I'm looking for, which is T2. Final temperature is what I'm looking for. Now, what do I do here? Easiest thing, really, um, to do is to cross multiply. And so I'm going to multiply this times this and this times this. Okay, so what does that give me? That gives me 298 Kelvin times 225 kilopascals equals 75 kilopascals times times T2, okay? Now, why did I do that again? Because what that is going to allow me to do is it makes it a little easier to get T2 by itself. It's real hard to get stuff that's on the bottom by itself without cross-multiplying. Possible, but a little bit easier this way. Now, how do I, am I actually going to get T2 by itself? Now that I have um, them multiplied by each other, I'm going to divide both sides by 75 kilopascals. Now, again, guys, this is just all straight up Algebra 1 stuff, or really, um, pre-algebra stuff like solve for x, except that instead of solve for x, I'm solving for t2. Okay, um, so I'm going to plug in these numbers into my calculator, and I'm going to get out of this 894 Kelvin. Now you should check this. If you're not getting those numbers, then make sure that you're doing your algebra right, and then make sure that you're plugging those things in right. And I will tell you that the biggest mistake that students usually make on gas laws is that they don't pay attention to which is 1 and which is 2, and they plug them in wrong. Okay, Initial conditions is always 1. Final conditions is always 2. And just be real clear when you plug them into the problems. Okay, so you're thinking, all right, great, we've been 15 minutes into the video. We're, we're done, right? Unfortunately not. Um, but here's the good news. Um, we're actually going to make all of this a little bit easier. We are going to take all three of those laws, okay, so Boyles, Charles, Gayle, Sachs, and we're going to put them all into one thing together called the combined gas law. Now, here's the good news about this. This is the equation that you can use in place of all of them. And if you look at this, it's got all of them together, okay? It's got um, P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. That's Boyle's law, okay? Um, we've got V1 over T1, V2 over T2, Charles' law, P1 over T1, P2 over T2. That's Gayle Sachs' law. But they're all put together here into one equation. Now, what's good here? is that this works well when nothing is constant, when basically everything is changing and you're solving for one thing, okay? Now, before we actually work a problem with it, let me show you that if, if you had a problem like the first one we had, so let's jump back to our Boyle's Law problem real quick. 15.0 liter sample of gas at constant temperature. Okay, so here's the deal. What you would do here is if you had a combined gas law problem, so you write, you've got this formula, this formula is going to be given to you on the test, and it says constant temperature, that means they're the same thing, so just cancel them out, and then you just work the problem with what's left. That would be Boyle's Law, okay? Um, the same thing would be true for any of the other problems. When we did the, whoops, when we did the Charles Law problem, um, we could just as easily have said, okay, um, I had constant uh, uh, volume in that, or constant pressure in that case, so I'm going to cancel my pressures out, okay? Gale Sachs, constant volume, cancel those out, and then I've got that left, okay? So you can do that. You can use that in place of any of the other three laws. So, let's do a problem. A lot of stuff right in there. Okay, so let's read through the problem, and then we'll talk about how to solve all of this. So, simple guess in a flexible container. What that means is that the volume can change. Okay, that's what flexible container means. So it's got a volume of 0.75. So since I've got so much stuff, I'm just I'm going to start writing it like right away. So V1 is 0.75 liters. Okay at 25 degrees Celsius, so that's T1. Remember that 25 degrees Celsius, we're gonna add 273, so that's gonna give us 298 Kelvin, okay, so that's T1, and a pressure of one atmosphere. Okay, so one ATM. So that's, the, that's like the initial conditions all right there. If the pressure is increased to 2.5, so that means P2 
2.5 atmospheres. Okay. Temperature is decreased to zero. Now this is really good because this shows us why we can't plug in Celsius temperatures. Because if I plug in a zero to that formula, um, I would get an undefined answer. We can't do that mathematically. So remember, everything's in Kelvin, so that's okay. So I'm going to add 273, and that's going to mean that my temperature is 273 Kelvin. And then the last thing is, what is the final volume? So what I'm looking for is final volume. That's really, to be honest with you, that is often what we're looking for, okay, is that final volume stuff. So um, now that we have everything we need, I'm going to move this out of the way just a tad, just to get bias a little bit more room here, okay? Slide all this stuff up just so that we can sort of see what we're dealing with a little bit better here. Okay, and then we're going to write down our equation. So remember that this equation basically has everything in it. So P1, V1, all over T1 equals P2, V2 all over T2. Okay? Now, there are a couple of ways. Really, if you wanted to, you could do the algebra before you plugged in the numbers. Okay? That's kind of what I would prefer to do. Like, I would get V2 by itself right now before I plugged in the numbers, but um, years of teaching chemistry tells me that that's not what students like to do. You would much rather just plug in the numbers. So let's do that. So P1 is one atmosphere. Okay? times V1, which is 0.75 liters, all over T1. T1 is 298 Kelvin. Okay, and then we've got P2, which is 2.5 atmospheres, times V2, okay, all divided by T2, which is 273, and again, Good thing I'm using Kelvin, because if I had to plug in a zero right there, I'm undefined. Whole problem rips a hole in space-time continuum. Okay, not really, but wouldn't work out mathematically, right? So from here, a couple of ways that you can go. Um, what a lot of students will want to do is say, hey, can I just go ahead and do the math on both sides at this point? Like, can I just um, figure out what this side is and what this side is? And I think that's kind of the easiest way to do it. You can do it any way. You could go ahead and cross-multiply and redivide or you could do this part and then multiply by 273 and then divide by 2.5 whatever way you're most comfortable with really um, but what I think is easiest is I'm gonna do the math on this side do the math that I have on this side and then I'll then I'll actually do a little bit more algebra so if I just multiply this and divide out I get point zero zero two five one six over here and I'm not gonna worry about the units at the moment because I know but my units are going to come out to be liters because that's what's not going to cancel. Okay. I'm over here on this side, 2.5 divided by two, uh, 273 gives me 0 0.00915. And then remember that all of that is times V2. Okay, so that's what's left. So these two things come to that. Those three things become that. I want to get V2 by itself. So I divide both sides by 0 0.00915. Sorry for the craziness there with the pen. Okay, that cancels. Then we plug this into our calculator and we get 0.27 liters equals V2. Okay, so good. Now, again, you kind of want to stop and say, I mean, does that make any sense? Well, my pressure increased, so my volume should probably go down. My temperature decreased, which would mean that my volume really should decrease, but my gain in pressure was a lot bigger than my lo uh, loss in temperature. So it kind of makes sense. Um, and regardless, if you did the algebra right, your math should have everything work out right. Okay? Now, listen, guys. I know, and this is what makes this, for most students, a lot harder than stoichiometry, because in stoichiometry, um, if you understand how to set up the railroad tracks, you pretty much just plug everything in, punch it in your calculator and you're okay. Um, what makes gas laws a little bit harder is that you have to do some algebra. Okay, so we're going to work a bunch of these. Um, do not skip working them. Um, actually work out the algebra and work out each step of the algebra like step by step if you need to um, until you're confident in how you solve these problems. All right.